here we are again in the shed and this time I'm going to show you how to fit the new billet aluminium MGF coil conversion to the subframe this is one I prepared earlier it's just a section that we use for testing uh, the first thing you've got to do is to make a little modification to the uh, subframe here this is the left hand side so it's the forward part of the subframe um, where the arm is going to be mounted we have to remove five millimeters of material here going round to 17 mil there so it's shaped like that that's the only thing and i'll the reason why will come evident shortly this is the new billet top arm that we've designed or i've designed um as you can see it's quite a chunky substantial nicely engineered piece of kit so going with that is the pivot bolt which is a standard pivot bolt we've got the oil light thrust washer that comes with the kit an o-ring that fits in there to seal any oil On the other side is another o-ring. This point here is a grub screw, stainless steel grub screw. Unscrew it, drop a couple of oil, drops of oil in there after you've assembled it, screw it back in. That just keeps the bearings wet. After that goes this thrust washer. Again an oil light thrust washer so it's sort of self-lubricating. Um, during service you can this this o-ring just closes that gap but not at this point so I'll pull that back off because it's gone in the wrong place thank you um, so during service you can just flick that that back and put a couple of drops of oil in there then this standard thrust washer that goes on that side so that's the assembly and we'll show you how to fit that in there. Obviously, you've done this slight modification here, um, but when you're doing that, just check that when you put the arm in, you're not fouling on that point. So, again, make sure the o ring didn't drop on the floor. We've got the oil light washer, the o ring, put it into that end as usual, line it through into the into the arm this screw has to be inserted first so that goes in in there that lines up with the end, end plate so we put these back in sequence the thrust washer and then the spacer tube Thing to note here, if you do ever want to change the uh, caster, you, you can machine, you can machine, uh, put an, another thrust washer in there and machine this end down the equivalent amount so it moves the arm over. But in, uh, in practice you shouldn't really need to do that. So with a bit of jiggling, this arm goes in a place like that. Put the tube through. Temporarily align that there. And then check everything's in place. We've got that Pull that back slightly, slide this thrust washer into place. You can line it with something at this end, 
which is a screwdriver just to hold it in place. You can use your finger if you feel you've got a couple to spare. And then just carefully, you can see it's gone into the washer there and then through into the end. Once you've got it into that position, just align the two screws, the M6 screws at this end, this one to go in, here, just put those in loosely, put the nut on there once that's These can be not fully tightened, but pull, let it, allow it to pull everything together in the correct amount. So, check that's in that end. You see, it's come through there. These can just be not to the tight, but just to stop everything moving about. Not fully tight in this. everything square okay we'll go around to that side the M the, these are half inch UNF nuts we will be supplied with a new nut and a new washer in the kit it's just easy to put these on because they've been on and off a few times so I can tighten them up quickly you see that that is moving nicely it's close to that head but uh, it doesn't interfere with it. So that's it. Nice. As this is being tightened up, just you can decentralise everything. You can just move that up and down. Okay, so it's you can see it's nipped up, but not. This is if that's the friction from the O-rings that it's applying. You can. Put a little bit of lube, see if everything's happy. As I said before, unscrew that grub screw there with an Allen key. Put a few drops of oil in, don't fill it, just a few drops, so five or six drops. Put it back in again and then just work it. And you can do that periodically as part of the maintenance on the kit. Okay, so that's tied up. You can see this other O-ring which has been sat here. Just, just an additional seal to help keep dirt out of that washer. Just make sure that's gone in to that joint. It's nice in there. That's just a, an additional seal just to keep any dirt out. So that's the top arm installed, tighten the pivot bolt up in accordance with the factory uh, specifications that will be with in the instructions I send. So there's nothing on this. The next stage is to fit the turret, which is basically the same way of fitting as in the normal kit, except there's this one slight difference. You have to um, align the, the the shock absorber the arm and the top shot a bit more accurately so here's a, a turret on its own basically fit that into the shift frame obviously when you're working on a car that's been on the road and it's got dirt and everything make sure everything's cleaned up before you start fitting any of this 
So there, I've just put the two bottom nuts in, pushed it up as you can hear it. And I'll just push that up, but don't just barely nip it just to hold it in place. The other two screws go in the top. these two in loosely okay. you don't have to be tight at this stage again push that back up again and just give it a slight nip I'm gonna to have to slacken these off again and I'll show you why later but you can see everything clears this hole has to be drilled through the spacer tube and the 2m10 screws go in there that's an additional stiffening point but leave that until you've got uh, the top shock point aligned well having said that you can do that because there's, quite, there's enough, there's enough play in the whole setup to allow that sort of fastening without impeding the movement on the top shot. Right. Next day, as you can see this assembly, we have the lower shock absorber cap that fastens onto the top arm. There's the through bolt, two thrust washers, and then there's two screws that hold the cap on. So what I'm going to do is remove that into there, put the long bolt in, I'll just hold it in place, stop it dropping. Screw a couple of nut, uh, nuts on, a couple of threads. And the two bolts in the cap can be fastened. Again, just throw it in, just nip up everything uh, by hand, not crank it up to full torque. At this point, okay. I'm still, you can see there's a bit of play because obviously it's a metalastic bush. But what I'm, what I want to do here is to ensure the piston, piston rod is in alignment with the top shock mount and the bottom mount so put that in make sure it's equally spaced either side at this point this is all loose and what i want to do um what I would normally do is take the spring off, push this right up, so we've got the full travel off the arm, and it's not binding, it's not going out of square. Once that's done, we then nip these screws up to hold the turret in the right place. Drill through those pilot holes, put the two screws in there. And before you tighten that up fully. bolt in here and tighten that up so if you haven't already done that there's a spacer tube that goes in there with an m10 screw on both sides pull that in and then tighten it up and 
once you're happy that everything's in the same alignment, this can be these top three screws can be nipped up equally. And do these gradually because you want this to pull in equally on both sides. Might have to even slacken this off as I'm doing. Pull it that way a little bit so that we've got equal gap for, at this point. Either side and then tighten the back and tighten the side. Equal until you achieve the correct torque setting. This can also then be nipped up so everything's in alignment before it's finally tightened. That can be nipped, correct torque setting. And then Use correct torque setting for this. Um, what I normally do is before you tighten this up fully, let the suspension come down to the ground so you're not tightening it up in this position, then it's fighting against the bolts or anything. So that can just be nipped up until you're ready to uh, put it down. The other thing to do here at this stage is to put the the rubber bump stop which fits in here so which actually before you put the top shock in you can do that that screws into this point here underneath that comes in the kit so that's just fastened in the camera adjustment is just done it's done slightly different because we've got a, th um, a four way adjustable collet that fits in here Take it down, spin it, depending on which camera setting you want. Again, you can uh, use it's user's shims to do that as well. So that's basically the billet um, fitting instructions. So the main thing is to make sure you've got clearance here on the subframe. And that's it. Just carefully assemble so you're not fighting. You don't use any hammers to get it to assemble. Uh, so thanks for watching I so said you keep tuned into our YouTube channel keep trying to put helpful hints and tips on if there's any questions you can obviously just give me a call thanks for watching